In this video, I want to give you a basic introduction into ionization energy. So what exactly is ionization energy? It's the energy that's required to remove an electron from a gaseous atom. So let's use silicon, for example. When a valence electron in silicon is removed, it's going to be ionized. It's going to turn into an ion. So thus we have the word ionization energy, the energy that's required to ionize an atom of silicon. You can also remove an electron from an ion too. So it doesn't have to be a gaseous atom, it could be a gaseous ion. So the energy that corresponds to this reaction is known as the first ionization energy. And in the case of silicon, it's 780 kilojoules per mole. Now, there's also the second ionization energy. So that's the energy to remove the second electron from silicon. So we're going to have silicon with a 2 plus charge at this point. And the value of the second ionization energy is 1575 kilojoules per mole. Now the third ionization energy is the energy that's required to remove the third electron from the silicon plus 2 ion. And so that is going to have a value of 3220 kilojoules per mole. Now I'm going to go up to the fifth one and then we're going to discuss the ionization values that we have. The fourth ionization energy is 4350. And going from the plus 4 ion to the plus 5 ion, we're removing the fifth electron. So the fifth ionization energy is 16,100 kilojoules per mole. Now, what relationship do you see here? What's the relationship between the charge of the ion and the ionization energy? So notice that as the charge of the gaseous atom or gaseous ion increases, the ionization energy increases with it. So it's a lot harder to remove an electron from the silicon plus 2 ion than the silicon plus 1 ion. So as the charge of the ion increases from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4, the ionization value increases. So that's the first thing you want to keep in mind. Now what's the second thing that you want to know? Is there anything else that you can see here? Now let's look at the increase in the ionization energy. So going from the first to the second, if you take a calculator and uh, subtract 1575 minus 780, you should get an increase of 795. Now let's do the same for the second to the third ionization energy. So 3220 minus 1575 represents an increase of 1645 kilojoules per mole. And let's do the same for the last two. So going from the third to the fourth, the increase is 1130. And from the fourth to the fifth, the increase is huge. It's 11,750. So here's a question for you. Why is the jump from the second to the third ionization energy the jump is 1645. Why is it higher than the jump from the third to the fourth ionization energy, which is 1130? How do you explain that? So think about it for a minute. See if you can come up with a reasonable explanation. Now, the electron configuration of silicon is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p2. So the removal of the first electron is the removal of the 3p2 electron. 
And for the second ionization energy, we're removing the 3p1 electron. Now, for the third ionization energy, we're removing the 3s2 electron. And for the fourth, we're removing the 3s1 electron. So the reason why the jump from the second to the third ionization energy is greater is because we're removing a 3s electron as opposed to a 3p electron. The 3p electron is further away from the nucleus than the 3s electron. And also, the 3s electrons provide more shielding for the 3p electron. So that's why it's a lot easier to remove a 3p electron than a 3s electron. And so that's why the jump going from 2 to 3 is greater than 3 to 4, because you're going from a 3p electron to a 3s electron. Removing any one of these two 3s electrons is really not that significant. The only difference is the charge is different, so it's going to be harder to remove an electron where the net charge is plus 3 as opposed to plus 2. But when they're in the same sublevel, it doesn't really jump as much, the ionization energies. But going from 3p to 3s, that's why we see that this jump is higher than that jump. Now, going from the fourth to the fifth electron, or the fourth to the fifth ionization energy, the jump is huge. And the reason being is you're not going from 3p to 3s. You're going from 3s to 2p. The fifth electron represents the 2p6 electron. And 2p is closer to the nucleus than 3s. In fact, these four electrons are known as valence electrons. They're in a third energy level. It's a lot harder to remove a core electron in the second energy level than a valence electron in the third energy level. And that's why there's a huge jump, is because you're removing a core electron as opposed to a valence electron. So because silicon has four valence electrons, the fifth ionization energy is going to be incredibly huge. Aluminum has three valence electrons. So the first three ionization energy values are relatively low compared to the fourth ionization energy, which is going to be huge because you're removing a core electron as opposed to a valence electron. So let's see if I can give you a better visual illustration of what we're talking about here. So this is going to be the 3s sublevel of the silicon atom. This is going to be 3p and 2p. And somewhere down in the bottom, we have the nucleus. And the energy increases as you go up. So the configuration for silicon is everything up to 3p2. So we said it took 780 kilojoules per mole to remove the 3p2 electron from silicon. And then the second ionization energy is 1575. Now, as we go from 3p to 3s, it's going to jump pretty high. So the third one, the 3s2 electron, it takes 32, 20 kilojoules per mole. And then the 3s1 electron, it's a little bit higher, 4350. But because it's in the same sublevel, the jump is not that high. Now, as we go from the third energy level to the second, the jump is going to be huge. It's 16,100 because we're trying to remove a core electron, and it's a lot harder to do so. So keep in mind, some of the reasons why the ionization energy increases is due to the nuclear charge. As the nuclear charge increases, the ionization energy increases. The second thing is the location of the electron relative to the nucleus. So if the distance between the electron and the nucleus increases, the ionization energy decreases. So what that means is that electrons, like this 3p electron that is further away from the nucleus, is going to have a lot, uh, the ionization energy is going to be a lot less compared to a 2p electron, which is closest to the nucleus. So the distance between the electrons and the nucleus is inversely related to the ionization energy. And the second thing is shielding. If you increase the amount of shielding, the ionization energy decreases. The 3p electron is shielded from the nucleus uh, uh, by the 3s electrons and the 2p electrons. So it's easier to remove a valence electron than a core electron because the core electrons provide some shielding to the valence electrons. So the 3p electrons are shielded by the 2p core electrons and even by the 3s valence electrons. 
So that's the third thing that affects the ionization energy. So charge, distance, and shielding. Now let's talk about the periodic trends of the ionization energy. So imagine if you're looking at an invisible periodic table. What you need to know is that the ionization energy increases in this general direction, that is towards helium. So the ionization energy increases as you go up across the periodic table and as you travel to the right across the periodic table. So let's focus on going up. So I'm going to use lithium, sodium, and potassium as an example. The ionization energy of lithium, that is the first ionization energy, is 520. In the case of sodium, is 495. And in the case of potassium, it's 419. So as you can see, as you go up across the group, the ionization energy increases. And as you go down, it decreases. Why is that? Well, let's draw an atom of sodium and lithium. Now, sodium has 11 protons, so the charge of the nucleus is 11. And sodium is in the third energy level. Lithium is in the second energy level. So I'm going to draw the Bohr model of the sodium atom. So I'll need to show three shells. Okay, that third circle didn't look right, so let's redo that. In the first energy level, there are two electrons. In the second energy level, there's eight electrons. And in the last one is one. So that's a total of 11 electrons. Lithium has a nuclear charge of plus three because there's three protons in the nucleus of lithium. But lithium is in the second energy level, so there's only two shells. It has two electrons in the first energy level and one in the last one. So it takes 495 kilojoules per mole to remove this electron. And in the case of lithium, it takes 520 to remove that electron. Why? The nuclear charge is different, but that's not the reason. Because it can't be the reason. Sodium has a higher nuclear charge than lithium. And as the charge increases, the ionization energy should increase. But sodium has a lower ionization energy than uh, lithium, so charge is not a factor here. Or the reason is not due to charge. The reason why sodium is less than lithium is because of two things, shielding and distance. This electron, the 3s electron, is further from the nucleus than the 2s electron. And so that's why the ionization energy of sodium is lower, because sodium is a bigger atom. And so you're looking at the third energy level as opposed to the second. So electrons that are further away from the nucleus will be a lot easier to remove than the ones that are closer. Because this electron is so close to the nucleus, the nucleus has a tighter grip on that electron. And so it's harder to remove that electron. The second is shielding. This electron is shielded from the nucleus due to the 10 core electrons. This electron only has two electrons that shield the nucleus from it. And so electrons that are further away from the nucleus have more shielded. They're protected by the nucleus based on the inner core electrons. And so there's two reasons why sodium has a lower ionization energy than lithium. is because sodium has three energy levels than uh, the two energy levels that lithium has. And that valence electron is further away from the nucleus than the valence electron in lithium, plus there's more shielding. Now the next thing that we mentioned is that the ionization energy increases as we go to the right across the periodic table. So let's consider the elements sodium, magnesium, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, and argon. So the ionization energy of sodium we said it's 495. And the first ionization energy of magnesium is 735 kilojoules per mole. For aluminum, it's 580. And silicon is 780. Phosphorus is 1060. Sulfur is 1005. 
chlorine is 1255 and argon is 1527. So going from sodium to argon, we can see a general trend. The ionization energy increases. The question is why? Now, all of these elements exist in the same energy level. That is the N equal 3 energy level. So they all have three shells, if you draw the Bohr model of the atom. So what's increasing as you go to the right is the nuclear charge. Sodium has 11 protons. Magnesium has 12 protons. And I'm writing the charge of the nucleus. The nuclear charge of argon is 18. It has 18 protons. And so as the nuclear charge increases, generally speaking, the ionization energy will increase. So that's the general trend we see as we go towards the right. Now there are some discontinuities, some exceptions. The first one is going from magnesium to aluminum. So why does it decrease going from Mg to Al? Now the reason being is the sublevels. Sodium is 3s1, magnesium ends in 3s2, but aluminum ends in 3p1. And so, as you mentioned before, the 3p sublevel it's further away from the nucleus than the 3s sublevel. So in the case of aluminum, it takes 580 kilojoules per mole to remove this electron, but for magnesium it's 735. And so that's why we see the decrease in ionization energy. Anytime we go from the S block to the P block, typically it goes down. You can look at the periodic table and look up the ionization energy values. You'll see that for most of the elements, it goes down from the S block to the P block because 3P is further away from the nucleus than 3S and is a little bit more shielded in two. Now the second discontinuity that we see is going from P3 to P4. So this is going to be phosphorus and that's sulfur. So the configuration for phosphorus ends in 3P3. In the case of sulfur, it ends in 3P4. So it takes 1,060 kilojoules per mole of energy to remove the 3P3 electron in phosphorus. But for the 3P4 electron, it's 1005. So why is it slightly easier to remove that electron as opposed to this one? The reason is electron-electron repulsion. Electrons don't like to share orbits with other electrons. Electrons prefer to have their own orbit. They don't like to share their orbitals. They repel other electrons. Like charges repel each other. And so when an electron is unpaired, it's in a more stable situation. When it's paired with another electron, it's in a less stable situation. And stability and energy are inversely related. So as the stability of something increases, the energy decreases. So this electron has less energy than this one. And as the energy decreases, the distance from the nucleus decreases as well. So electrons that have low energy or exist in lower energy levels, like the 2s level versus the 3s level, those electrons tend to be closer to the nucleus. Electrons that exist at higher energy levels tend to be further away from the nucleus. So the fact that this is less stable means that it has more energy, and on average means that it's going to be further away from the nucleus, which means it's easier to remove. So paired electrons are easier to remove than unpaired electrons, given that everything else is the same. So that's why this value is lower because you're removing a paired electron as opposed to an unpaired electron. So I think that's enough for the lectures. Let's work on some examples. Which atom or ion has the largest ionization energy? So let's compare magnesium and calcium. Which one is going to win? Now, if we place these elements in their respective position in the periodic table, 
magnesium is above calcium. These are alkaline earth metals. And we know that the ionization energy increases as you go up. So therefore, magnesium should have a higher ionization energy than calcium. And if you want to find the values of the ionization energies for the elements, just go to Google Images and type in ionization energy periodic table. And you should find some stuff there. Magnesium has an ionization energy, according to my textbook, of 735. And calcium is 590. So clearly, magnesium wins. It has a larger ionization energy. It's a lot harder to remove an electron from magnesium than from calcium in the gaseous state. So now let's move on to part B. So which one has a higher ionization energy, silicon or phosphorus? Now, in the periodic table, phosphorus is to the right of silicon. So which one is going to win? Well, we know that as you travel towards the right, the ionization energy increases. So therefore, we should expect that phosphorus should have a higher ionization energy than silicon. In fact, the ionization energy of silicon, the first one is 780, and the first ionization energy of phosphorus is 1060. So going from 3P2 to 3P3, the ionization energy increases towards the right. Now let's move on to part C. So which one has the higher ionization energy, beryllium or boron? Now beryllium and boron are on the second row in the periodic table, and boron's to the right of beryllium. So naturally, we should expect that the ionization energy should increase as we go to the right. However, this is one of those exceptions, because beryllium is in the 2s sublevel and boron is in the 2p sublevel. And whenever you're going from s to p as you go across to the right, not always, but for the most part, for most elements, the ionization energy will decrease. Typically, the elements in the top of the periodic table tend to show this, but the heavy elements in the bottom, they may not show that trend. Beryllium has a first ionization energy of 899, and for boron, it's 800. So 2p is a lot higher in energy than 2s, like the difference is significant, such that it's easier to remove an electron from the 2p sublevel than the 2s sublevel. So the answer is beryllium. It has a higher first ionization energy. Now what about phosphorus and selenium? Actually, I mean, I jumped ahead. Let's go to part D, nitrogen or oxygen. Oxygen is to the right of nitrogen. Now, nitrogen ends in 2p3, oxygen ends in 2p4. Now even though we're going towards the right, oxygen is not going to have the higher ionization energy. It's one of those exceptions. Whenever you go from p3 to p4, you're comparing an unpaired electron to a paired electron. Nitrogen has that unpaired electron. This is the 2p electron. And oxygen has a paired electron, the 2p4. And so it's going to be easier to remove the 2p4 electron than the 2p3 electron due to electron repulsions. So in the case of nitrogen, it takes 1402 kilojoules per mole of energy to remove that electron. For oxygen, it's less. It's 1314. So nitrogen has the higher ionization energy. Now let's move on to part E. Let's compare arsenic and sulfur. Now these two elements are not in the same row. So arsenic is in the fourth row and selenium, I mean sulfur, is in the third row. So sulfur is one row above arsenic and it's to the right. So which one is going to win? Arsenic 
or sulfur. Above arsenic, you have phosphorus. Below sulfur, you have selenium. Now, keep in mind, the ionization energy increases as you go up and as you go towards the right. So the ionization energy increases this way, towards helium. So based on that trend, it should be clear to us that sulfur should have the higher ionization energy. The ionization energy of arsenic is 947. And for sulfur, it's 1005. So sulfur has the higher ionization energy. It follows this trend. Now what about part F? What if we compare phosphorus and selenium? Which one has the highest first ionization energy? Now which one has more priority? Is it going up or going towards the left? Or rather, I meant to say going towards the right, because selenium is to the right of phosphorus. It turns out that it varies. Sometimes going up has more priority than going towards the right, and sometimes it's the other way around. So whenever you have two elements in this position, the best way to find the answer is to look up the values. Phosphorus has an ionization value of 1060, and selenium is 941. So in this case, phosphorus wins against selenium. But in other examples, it won't be like that. For example, if you compare sulfur and bromine, so bromine should be right here in the periodic table. Sulfur is 1005, but the first ionization energy of bromine is 1143. So this time, the element in this position wins. And so it, it varies whenever you have two elements laid out like this. You just have to compare the numbers. Now let's move on to part G. Which one has a higher first ionization energy? Is it the aluminum plus 2 ion or the aluminum plus 3 ion? So in the earlier part of this video, when we went over the different ionization energies of silicon, we saw that as the charge of the silicon ion increased, the ionization energy increased. So aluminum has the highest positive charge, so therefore we should expect that it's going to have the highest ionization energy. Now what if we're dealing with negatively charged ions? Which one is going to win? For these two ions, this trend still holds. So which ion has the highest charge or the highest positive charge? Negative 2 is more positive than negative 3. Negative 2 is less negative than negative 3, so this one is going to win. On a number line, negative 2 is greater than negative 3. So let's make a number line. Here's the aluminum plus 3 charge. This is the aluminum plus 2 charge. This is 0. This is the negative 2 charge of the first phosphorus ion, and here's the negative 3 charge of the second. So as you travel this way in terms of charge, the ionization energy is going to increase. So the aluminum plus 3 ion has a higher charge than the aluminum plus 2 ion. And P minus 2 is going to be higher than P minus 3. So you can see it that way if it helps. But the one with the most positive charge or the least negative charge, that's going to be the one with the highest ionization energy. So ions with positive charge have a higher ionization energy than ions with negative charges. Now let's move on to this one. Rank the following elements in order of increasing first ionization energy. Now the best thing you could do is place these elements in their respective positions based on the periodic table. So barium is somewhere down here. Fe is a transition metal that's around this area. And then silicon is somewhere over here. And then here's oxygen. And then here is helium. The ionization energy increases as you go up and to the right. So basically it increases as you travel towards helium. So we should expect that helium has the highest ionization energy and barium has the lowest. 
So to write it in order of increase in first ionization energy, we're going to start with the lowest and then write the highest. So iron metal has a higher ionization energy than barium metal, and then silicon is even greater than iron, and then we have oxygen and then helium. Now if you want the values, here are they. So for Ba, it's 503. For iron metal, it's uh, 763. For silicon, it's 780. For oxygen, it's 1314. And helium is 2377. So as you can see, generally speaking, the ionization energy increases as you travel towards helium. Number three, the ionization energies of an unknown element is listed below. Based on his data, which of the following elements could be the unknown element? Is it potassium, aluminum, sulfur, krypton, or silicon? Now, what you need to focus on is the jump that occurs from the third to the fourth ionization energy. It jumps almost by 9,000. So that jump is huge. So that means that since the jump occurs in the fourth ionization energy, the first three are valence electrons. The fourth ionization energy represents the removal of a core electron. So if the jump occurs in the fourth ionization energy, that means this element has three valence electrons. So your task is to identify which element has three valence electrons. Silicon is in group 4A. It has four uh, valence electrons. Krypton is a noble gas. It has eight valence electrons. Sulfur has six. Aluminum has three. Potassium has one. So this element would correspond to aluminum. That is the unknown element. Aluminum has three valence electrons. And so you might see a question like this on the test. So let's say if the jump occurs from the sixth to the seventh ionization energy. So the seventh ionization energy is very, very huge. That means the element would have six valence electrons, and so that element would be sulfur. And so that's how you can answer questions that look like this if you see it on the test. But for this particular problem, the answer is B, due to the fact that we have three valence electrons.